All right, guys, how are you doing today? As we move forward here and start to look at alternating current um, and doing some of the AC circuit labs, uh, we're going to be using Tinkercad and Tinkercad's 123D circuit module to do this. So I want to show you uh, the oscilloscope. Oscilloscope is a tool that we use and we can measure uh, fluctuating waveforms. So today I need you to open your Tinkercad account. Um, I want you to pull out three basic components. Uh, the first one being the oscilloscope itself. Just type oscilloscope over there in the search and uh, pop that out on the screen. Um, we'll talk about the settings later on. You want a function generator. Function generator, you can type function there, uh, is your source of alternating current. Now right now it defaults, um, right now my th default here is 1000 hertz. Uh, I have a 5 volt peak to peak and uh, 2.5 and, and square wave. Those are default settings. We'll change those in a minute and we'll show you what they do. Um, last thing we need is a load. We need something for our circuit to power. So get a resistor and uh, oops. Get a resistor out there. This is going to be a load in our circuit. Remember you can use R to rotate any of your components. So I'm going to rotate my resistor around. The value of this resistance is 1k. It does not matter for our demonstration what the value of your resistor is. Uh, it just serves as a load. Okay. Um, now let's take some time and set that up. We're going to pull our negative wire out, pull our positive wire out. If you like, you can go back and uh, set those colors so your positive is red, your negative is green, is uh, black. Okay, I have a simple circuit and I would power my uh, resistor with this uh, alternating signal coming from this function generator. Now I want to use the oscilloscope to read that signal. So to use that oscilloscope, I have to hook it in into the circuit and I do want to pay attention to the positive and negative. So I'm going to take the red wire here and drop this out just to make this a little bit neater. I'll put some bends in there by clicking on the screen. Okay, and I can uh, line those up. Take my uh, black one out here, put a bend in it, and line it up. Okay, again, if you like to make your colors uh, match, you can do that. Um, but here we are, we have our, our basic circuit um, ready to go. Now, if we hit the Start Simulation button over here, Remember, we just have our default values up and we had a 100 kHz signal. Doesn't look like a whole lot of anything on my uh, oscilloscope. And um, my oscilloscope is not very useful uh, to what I see here. We have to change some things here uh, so it, it makes a little more sense. So let's start. Um, I'm going to put a 5 hertz signal on here just so we understand the oscilloscope. There's some settings on the oscilloscope we could change to read this. Um, but for right now, we're going to put something that makes sense with the way the oscilloscope is currently set up. So I changed that to be 5 hertz in the frequency. What that means is there are 5 cycles of waveform per second, or 5 changes. In this case, it's a square wave. So what I'm seeing is a on signal and an off signal of my waveform. So when we look over here, see we're off, we're on we're off, we're on, we're off, we're on. Now, if you count those peaks, you're going to see there's five times it's on. One, two, three, four, five. There's five times it's off. One, two, three, four, five. We have five cycles over a time frame of a second. The oscilloscope's nothing more than a fancy graph, uh, and this should look kind of like the Cartesian grids you're used to in algebra and geometry class. Um, trig. We have a horizontal axis that's graphing time. In our case here, this graph represents a full second. There's 10 squares here, remember. Um, when we first set this up, the default was 100 milliseconds uh, per division. Well, if you take your one second and divide that by 10, uh, that's where we get 100 milliseconds um, per division. So, your time is graphed on the horizontal axis, and your voltage is graphed on the vertical axis. Our voltage here right now says there's 20 volts collectively over these 10 squares. That means each one of these squares, because there's 10 of them, 
each one of these squares is equal to 2 volts. Since we know it's equal to 2 volts, you can count here and you can see you have 1 square, 2 squares, and a half squares for your, your signal. Okay, And that makes sense. 2 and a half with times 2 squares to the division uh, gives me my 5 volt peak to peak signal. So what we're seeing is the bottom of our waveform is at, at um, the zero axis line. The top of my waveform on the graph is at a value of two and a half squares. Uh, but because each division here equals two seconds, two and a half squares times two seconds makes my five volt value there. Uh, that's how we can use the oscilloscope to uh, measure and understand a, a value that that we have in front of us. Now I'm going to change a couple things here on the um, function generator settings. Uh, first thing I'll do is change the DC offset. If I change the DC offset to zero, watch what happens to my waveform and watch what happens to the auto range on my uh, voltage here. Notice that the horizontal zero value of the signal uh, is now coming right through the middle of the waveform, where before it was at the bottom. Um, and notice that the range value that was 20 is now 10. Well, what has happened is because we have 10 squares here, I take my 10 divided by the 10 squares, and now I know that each square is equal to one second per division. Uh, so again, it hasn't changed the output. It hasn't changed my 5-volt peak-to-peak value but it did change the range setting. And so it's important you understand that you pay attention to what this value is out here and divide it by the 10 squares that, that you have in the vertical. So now if I count my squares, there's one, two, three, four solid squares, plus a half square up here and a half square down here. That makes up for five squares. Well, if it's one second to the division um, and we're setting out a five volt peak to peak signal that makes sense for five squares to be re represented uh, here on my my graph so again we still have a five volt signal what happens if i change that let's come over here and change the amplitude of the signal let's make it uh six we change it to six and notice the waveform also changes in that vertical distance we're still at a one second per division value because there's 10 squares vertically on my graph when I look at the whole graph, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. That's 10 collectively vertically. So 10 volts divided by 10 squares equals one volt to the division or one volt per square. So if there's three in the negative and there's three in the positive, we're six collectively. And that's where we get that over here. That is the vertical uh, range or voltage range of the signal that's on the oscilloscope. Okay, so I just changed the waveform over here and I put this button um, on top and that changed the shape of the wave. Notice that what was square has now become a triangle or they call it a triangle waveform. Um, but it didn't change the number of cycles per second. It is still a five hertz signal. And uh, you'll notice here that there are still five um, cycles. If I look uh, my negative, my positive, covering two squares there. Negative, positive, there's my second cycle. Negative, positive, there's my third cycle. And I can keep going. I have five cycles. I have five negative peaks. I have five positive peaks uh, as we're looking at the, the wave shape. That shape can be changed to something you might be very familiar with um, from the AC power module, this sine wave. The sine wave is the basic shape that we're getting from a, uh, an AC generator um, where a magnet is spun around a fixed wire or a wire is spun around a fixed magnet uh, rotating 360 degrees for a full cycle. So one cycle repre represents a 360 degree rotation. That's our sine wave output here. And notice we still have five cycles per second or five alterations per second as we go through this wave shape, okay? Five negative alterations, five positive alterations. 
Okay, so you also notice that the sh changing the shape of the waveform, um, changing the shape of the waveform hasn't changed our peak to peak value. We're still six volts, and uh, our graph here still shows six volts peak to peak. Um, notice our, our 10 volt setting overall. There's 10 squares here. Take these 10 squares, 10 volts divided by your 10 squares gives you one volt to the division. So there's one square, two squares, three squares in the negative, one square, two squares, three squares in the positive alteration, six squares overall uh, in our um, sine wave. Uh, so we weren't able to actually change the peak to peak value um, in here. So what we saw is the square wave, which is what we started with way back in the beginning. Um, we'll let this catch up. The square wave has six volts peak to peak. The sine wave has six volts peak to peak. And the triangle wave has six volts peak to peak. And so my graph shows that six volt setting here with respect to a zero volt offset, we're seeing negative alterations below the horizontal line and positive alterations above the horizontal line. Um, so what we've learned is our frequency is our cycles per second or our horizontal graph. Uh, our frequency is measured on the horizontal and our amplitude uh, is our voltage measured on the uh, vertical axes. Here. Um, Axis here. Now to wrap this up, let's see how this relates to the calculations that you guys did in the AC power um, module. Uh, in AC power, you learned that frequency is calculated with the equation uh, 1 over the period, or the inverse of the period. And you learned that the period is calculated with 1 over the frequency. Remember, the period of the waveform is how long does it take for one full positive alteration and one full negative alteration. One complete cycle is considered the period of a waveform. Um, so cycles per second, or how many complete cycles per second, uh, is the frequency of the waveform. So going back to our example here, if we have a 5 hertz waveform, that's the frequency. We want to know and calculate what our period is. Um, so let's take a calculator out here. And uh, we'll take our uh, 1 divided by 5 to get 0.2 seconds. 0.2 seconds is 200 milliseconds. It's telling us that it's going to take 200 milliseconds for one cycle of this waveform to complete. Okay, And we can do the math over here and figure that out. If you take uh, 1 second, these 10 squares here, so we'll take that one second divided by the number of squares, 10 squares, you should know that's 0.1. Well, that means that one square here is equal to 0.1 second or 100 milliseconds. And I have two squares for a full cycle. One, two for a full cycle alteration. Okay, that corresponds with our math. There you see your 200 milliseconds for the cycle. The period of this waveform is 200 milliseconds. All right, final step here. We're going to take that math and go in the opposite direction. Uh, we know that one cycle of our wave is 0.2 seconds or 200 milliseconds. So let's take that time and figure out what the, the frequency of our wave is, which we're often doing with an oscilloscope. Pulling my calculator back out here, I take 1 divided by, I'm going to use 0.2. I have to take 200 milliseconds and put it into terms of seconds. So 1 divided by 0.2 equals 5. 5 what? 5 hertz. Because I divided by seconds, um, my answer is in, in hertz. And so uh, that's how we take our uh, period and turn it into frequency. Hopefully you guys got everything out of this. If you have questions, send me an email.